Hello, listeners. I'm Tim Tradamus, and welcome to another hump day. With me, as always, is my talented and beautiful co hostess, Voice. Good morning, Tim Stradamus, and welcome to all listeners. Tim Stradamus, have you heard of the Twas the Night Before Christmas poem by Clement Clark Moore? Of course. Did you know that's not actually its original title? What was the original title? A Visit from St. Nicholas. It was actually so iconic, that first line, that that became the title going forward. Christmas facts. <laughs> <laughs> For new listeners, Voice and I enjoy reading and talking about stories from the internet that are interesting, funny, and dramatic. Because of our love of stories, we've come together and created this channel to share with you those experiences. And hopefully give you some food for thought. Well, Voice. Well, Tim Stradamus. What have you brewed this morning? I have crafted for you a tea. I had some leftover black tea leaves and decided that I wanted to infuse it with some vanilla bean and vanilla extract so hopefully this is a black tea vanilla extract that you'll enjoy Ooh, that hit my jaw (laughs) (laughs) that's a five out of five that's really good for me vanilla has always been iconic with the holidays i can agree with that perfect well while you go ahead and enjoy your morning brew we'll go ahead and delve right into these stories for any listeners wanting to follow along all story links are in the description below for our first story Am I the a-hole for not allowing my ex to get the kids their passport? My ex and I are split up. Our older son lives with him and younger with me. We are both not high income, but he somehow landed a wife who makes four times our income, and they often go out of the country on nice vacations, which I guess he has been sharing with the kids. The kids want their passports now thanks to his brainwashing. I initially said yes, because him and my son caught me off guard and started asking me if it was okay one day. Then I had time to think about it and realized how bad things are in the world right now, and I don't feel like it's worth the risk and danger having the kids so far away from me and out of the country with their dad and stepmom. They also need my consent per our custody agreement to go out of the country anyway, and at this point, I'd never say yes. So today, when my ex asked me if ex date was okay for the passport appointment, I asked where he is even going to be taking the kids, to which he told me he didn't know yet. They just want to get the ball rolling because it takes three months just to get the passport, and they haven't planned anything specific yet, which I find sketchy. So I told him and the kids no, that he needs my consent to take them anywhere because of how bad the world is right now, and I'd never agree so passports are pointless. My younger son got upset, and my ex got angry also and kept repeating, Are you just never going to allow them to go anywhere then? I never said that, just not right now. So my ex is texting me now saying I'm an a-hole and I'm robbing my kids of experiences, except I never have gone out of the country and don't have a passport and I am fine, so I don't really buy it. Like, does a 7-year-old and a 14-year-old really need to experience Japan or England or whatever? They can go when they are 18 and probably appreciate it more then. Other than some initial disappointment, my kids haven't even mentioned it to me again, so I have a feeling they don't really care, and it's more their dad influencing them. So, am I the a-hole? It looks like someone's trying to out-scrooge me for this holiday season. It seems like it. This one really is a story of, I guess, jealousy. She's basically barricading her kids away from the husband. I don't really think it has anything to do with where they go. I think this was just a made up straw man argument on her end. Because no matter what, there is always something going on in the world somewhere. You can have that argument about anything at any time. I think that her saying that kids don't benefit from being exposed to other cultures and places is very interesting because it kind of shows you how close-minded she is as an individual. But to do it the way she is by playing keep away because of her jealousy is very suspect as a parent. So how far did the rabbit hole go for you to be in this state? Well, the rabbit hole goes a little further. I saw a smile creep up on your face. And I was like, "Opie dope, here we go. That's because you know to ask the right questions now. So our OP actually puts down in another post, in another forum, 
where she wants to show the courts about parental alienation that she believes is done by her ex. However, I read through her post and all that I gather in everything that she's written is that the current living arrangements where she's living with her boyfriend and her oldest son aren't seen eye to eye. And to add to that, it looks like her boyfriend also isn't respecting the boundaries of her son. So of course, he wouldn't want to stay living with his mother if he can go to his father where these problems go away and he seems happier. At the end of the day, given the information that you had just told us about how she's in an environment where her boyfriend doesn't respect her son, obviously I would understand the son not wanting to live there. She's going further out of her way though to create drama where there doesn't need to be, especially if the kids are already telling her that they want to live over there. You chose to pick a partner that obviously doesn't have the best interests of your kids at heart. If they're combative with each other like that and you're not at least being a mediator to try to fix that issue, obviously this is going to be the outcome. In my mind, you're letting your bitterness. And I didn't like the, the quote she did at the beginning of the story where she goes, he manages to find, when she speaks of her ex-husband, he manages to find someone that makes four times more than what he does. How could he possibly have done that? Your bitterness is all throughout this story, and it's going to affect your relationship with both your kids if you're not careful. So in my mind, you are the a-hole OP. So the consensus on Reddit is that our OP is definitely the a-hole. In fact, let me go ahead and read a top comment. They said, this isn't about the rest of the world being unsafe and dangerous, which it isn't. This is about you being jealous. He's married someone who makes more money than you and can introduce your kids to new experiences without you. Stop being selfish. I have to say, and I agree, there are dangerous places all over the world. And I can understand if you're worried about your child's safety. But this is why you have clarity between both parents and itineraries made. You need to know where your child is going. You need to know when they're coming back. You need to make sure that you have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed. But trying to limit or remove those experiences because you're being petty is really bad. And I really do suggest that our listeners read our OP's additional post. I think it provides a lot of clarity into their character. Based on what I read and how I surmise all of it, you cannot force the courts to make your kids spend more time with you if that is not what they want. The more that you do, the more they will resent you and push you away. Well, I, I will say this in a little bit of her defense, though. When people get divorced and they start pitting the kids against them, I don't, <laughs> I don't put that past anyone to do. She might be facing some of that with the husband. I'm not trying to absolve him of anything. I can get where maybe the paranoia might have set in because of some of the factors, but Overall, this story is you keeping them from enjoying things because of your bitterness. I definitely agree with that. There are parents that do do that to each other. And this could be a case of it being they're both treating each other awfully and their kids are stuck in the middle of this. Yep. One of the best things that I did read on the other side was a suggestion that she not hold on so tight. Well, let's go ahead and walk away from that whole situation because it's a mess. And let's go to this next messy situation. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the a-hole for telling my kids not to call her their aunt? New to this forum, so I will try to make this simple. 25 years ago, when I married my now ex-wife, we were very close to my Uncle P, my dad's younger half-brother, and his wife, my Aunt D. My ex-wife and D were particularly close because they were very close in age, so they treated each other more like sisters. Only a few weeks after we were married, P died suddenly in an accident. D had two young kids, one and two. At the time, we went to the funeral and did all the family things, and then my parents decided that since P was dead, D was no longer technically family. So we all stopped seeing her and the kids at my parents' request. Well, I didn't know this, but all that time my ex-wife was in contact with D over email and eventually social media. 
No one else in the family was close to Dee or even seeing her and the kids at this time. Because again, my uncle was dead, so she was no longer my aunt. So why should my ex be in contact with them? There's no reason. Well, about 12 years after P died, my wife and I divorced. After the divorce, my ex-wife started spending more and more time with D, who by now was remarried and had a daughter, K, the same age as my middle kid. These two are now 17. I have two other kids as well. My kids would tell me about all the time they spent with their cousin, K, and each time I would tell them she is not their cousin. They would then ask me if A and J, D's boys with my late uncle, were their cousins, and I would tell them technically yes. They would say that since K is the sister of A and J, that makes her their cousin as well. I told them that's not how it works. Despite this, my ex-wife and my kids kept spending time with D and the kids, especially K. Just this past week, my two younger kids told me they were going to Aunt D's for Thanksgiving to see her and K and the surviving son of P, along with his wife and kids. The older son of P died last year, also in an accident. I was very upset and told my children again that D is not their aunt and K is not their cousin, that D and K are just regular people. My son, who is the same age as K, said that's not true, and he has really enjoyed having a cousin only a few weeks younger than him while he has been growing up, and that he really misses his cousin A and wants to see his room and visit his things so he can feel like A is still alive. I told him that my brother's two kids are his cousins, but that's all the cousins he has, and that I'm sorry A died, but he is not their cousin, and that they are no longer allowed to refer to D as aunt in my presence. The kids said that's not fair, and that's all they've ever known her as. I told them that could not possibly be true, because P died before any of them were born so they should never have called them family in the first place. They said I was being a jerk. So am I? You're definitely being a bit more than a jerk in my book. But we'll start with this. I think if they've spent enough time with, and I guess this would be his late uncle's wife. Correct. That his ex-wife kept in contact with, which is why the kids knew each other and it was a, a family outside of this bonehead believing that just because someone passed, you just automatically cut ties with people, right? They're no longer a part of the family. Especially when you have a relationship, a current relationship with them. That makes a lot of sense. So someone dies, we cut you completely off. How old are the kids? The kids are now in their teens. So this son that was talking to him and having this conversation at the very end was 17. And unfortunately, the... I guess you could say when you're thinking about cousins, it, you're thinking like first cousin, second cousin. So A was, I guess, first cousin and he has a son. This is where things get really confusing because of how different and varied their ages are. The cousin that died was in and close to his 30s. Well, you can definitely hear from the story that the kids were hurting because of the loss. Correct. And all he could sit there and say was that people didn't amount to being fully labeled family members because of someone passing away. I think you are a lost traducan and you're going to be pushing your kids away. And they're going to start realizing that uh, you just got a lot of hate in your heart. And I'm sorry for it. I don't know where it started or who made you feel alienated within your life to start doing that to other people, especially when they mean that much to your kids. Those are relationships that they have with other people that are good for them. Just like the last story, you need to learn how to not hold on so tightly. Well, the consensus on Reddit is that our OP is definitely the heel. In fact, a lot of Redditors got really up in arms on this. They said, look, the widow in this story has just lost her husband and instead your family turns around and decides to fully cut her off when she had two children with him that's especially cold-hearted i would have to say 
Our OP's upbringing was one where he really had to listen to his parents because that's the only reason why this cutting of ties even began, started with the parents. And now he expects the same treatment where I'm telling you that she is no longer a part of the family and therefore you have to follow what I say because that was the structure that our OP followed from his parents. I think it's honestly a very twisted way to actually look at relationships. I think, especially after reading a lot of his comments, I can understand why his marriage didn't honestly work out. In one of the comments, he goes, it's annoying because I told my ex-wife 25 years ago she wasn't allowed to hang out with D and she's been doing it all this time behind my back. That was another strange thing. Why do you care so much that your wife is hanging out with and having a relationship with someone that is a part of your guys' family? I hate to sound like this. He's not a good person. I don't think his parents are good people either. Because as I'm reading through a lot of his comments, the way that he's explained some of the family dynamics, like his father's younger half-brother that passed away, he's a half-brother because their parents, and I guess that would be his grandfather, his grandfather cheated on his wife and therefore half-brother came into play. So... They have this issue because I guess half brother had an affair with D and now they're together. So the family didn't approve because an affair child had an affair and then had children. <laughs> Everything seems to be falling in line with so much family drama. I can't even begin. I'm going to need you to make me a flow chart. <laughs> oh, it, it gets it. It actually took me writing this out to understand it. That's and even then, it's still confusing. On top of that, I feel like the the children are truly getting punished. They're grieving the loss of, I mean, they're one and two. They're growing up without their father. They don't have any support from their father's original family because, and mind you, this still baffles me. The reason why OP's parents decided that she was no longer to be a part of their family was because they weren't seated in the family section of the funeral. Oh, boy. Okay, well, that's definitely an interesting turn where I guess you can see there being a slight and then if we weren't good enough to be your family at that point, we're not good enough to be your family at other things. So I can get where that would have started and felt that way. Is it right? No. I'm not saying it's right, but what I can say is, especially when you're talking about older generations, when slights are committed, no one knows how to communicate and talk because it might have just been an honest mistake at a funeral. There's a lot to do at a funeral. There's a lot going on on top of the grieving. That's very unfortunate because you are right. Those kids lost their father and then they got turned on by their family. The good part about this is the son in spite of his father, has a heart. And I hope it stays that way. In my mind, no matter where you're seated in a row at a funeral, it's a sad event. Unless you're talking about some weird status play, for me, it really should just, you're being there to grieve the loss of someone that you love. And that should be the end of it. I agree. Everything else aside from that is petty and should be left at the door. I just want to reiterate though. I do not agree with what happened. I'm just <laughs> saying I understand from people needing just a, a slight push to have an, a grudge against someone and they get it and they'll follow it. I do not like his other comments. You can definitely tell he comes from a different generation that looks at things in a way that's very archaic and outdated. Unfortunately, that can happen when uh, you choose not to grow as a person. Well, let's go ahead and leave that behind. Apparently that brought out a little bit of my bitter side. And let's just go into our next story and see about this situation. Am I the a-hole for moving out and leaving my mom high and dry for childcare? I, female 23, until recently, lived with my mom and half-brother and sister, Mason 12 and Layla 23. Mom has split custody with their dad, Chris. When he was little, Mason begged and begged to get a dog, 
but he couldn't because of my allergies. Mom and Chris split up when the kids were five and three, so when Chris had his own place set up, he got them a dog from the shelter, Hulk, now 11. A couple of months back, Chris was evicted. His new place doesn't allow dogs, and he couldn't find anyone else to take them. So he asked Mom if she could, promising that he would be looking for somewhere that allows pets in the meantime. Mom agreed without even telling me beforehand. My allergies aren't life-threatening, but they do cause cold-like symptoms that make me feel utterly miserable and uncomfortable. I was annoyed that I hadn't even been consulted. I'd like to note that at no point have I suggested that they should get rid of the dog, and I don't think it either. I know how much the kids love Hulk and how losing him would break their hearts. What I did do was ask mom to agree to what I thought were reasonable accommodations. Number one, he does not set foot in my bedroom or the kitchen. The doors are kept shut. He has no need to go in either room. The back door to the garden is in the dining room. He only goes into the bathroom when he needs a bath. That door is also kept shut. I am not responsible for the dog. If mom's not there, then Mason and Layla are responsible for taking care of him. I'd put down food slash water and let him out to pee if I was alone with him, but that's it. I would only handle him in emergencies, such as to get him out of the house in a fire or take him to the vet in an emergency. Mom agreed to these, but from the get-go, they were not being adhered to. The kids were constantly leaving the doors open, even my bedroom door. I found him in my room multiple times. I then discovered it was mom too. I came home from work to see her coming out of my room after leaving some clean clothes in there for me and not shutting the door. Hulk ran in and jumped onto my bed where my clean clothes were left. I shooed him out, put the clothes back into the washing machine, along with my bedding. I opened the window, then vacuumed my carpet. Mom thought I was overreacting. This continued for a while. My complaints fell on deaf ears. I started to consider moving out. My friend and her boyfriend have their own place with the spare room they've offered to me before. I turned it down initially because I had things good at home. Mom didn't charge me rent. I only pay a portion of the food shopping, so I could put most of my money into savings. In return, I help look after the kids. Mom works a rotating shift pattern, a few weeks of morning 6 to 2 and a few of afternoons 2 to 10. This makes childcare difficult. On the days when mom has custody, I get them up and off to school on her morning shifts. And on her afternoon shifts, they are now old enough to be on their own for the two hours between finishing school and me getting home from work. I cook them dinner make sure they've done their homework and enforce their bedtime. I've never minded this. They're good kids, and they don't really need looking after anymore. They're old enough to be left to their own devices. I messaged my friend and asked her if her offer was still good. She said yes, and I made arrangements to move in in a few weeks' time. I wanted to give my mom a reasonable amount of notice. Mom wasn't happy about this. She asked what on earth she was going to do with childcare now. I told her that they are old enough to get themselves up and off to school. Literally, all I did was wake them up and see them off. They got themselves dressed and their own breakfast sorted, and they already let themselves in after school anyway. Plus, I'd only be five minutes away. I'd come straight away if they needed me. I can understand not wanting them cooking. Layla doesn't know how, and Mason forgets to turn the oven off. But as she doesn't start work until 2, she can cook them something to warm up in the microwave. She just said, no, they can't, and then trivialized the whole situation about how it was silly to get upset over some sniffles. How she agreed to my outrageous conditions. So why am I complaining? I moved out as scheduled. Mom only spoke to me either to argue or to try to use the kids to guilt me. Apparently, she didn't expect me to go through with it. I moved out this morning. My dad borrowed a van and helped me move my stuff. Even he said it's a silly reason to move out. It's not like being around a dog kills me. 
At this point, it's not even about the dog. It's about her not treating me with basic respect after I've helped her raise her kids, then using those same kids to guilt me. She keeps calling me, asking when I'm going to come back. The latest one sounded like she was genuinely crying. She was apologizing and said she doesn't know what she's going to do on Monday. She's in at six, still refuses to accept they are old enough. I've got family texting me, telling me to stop acting like a brat and go home. How dare I upset my mother who's been so good to me? How dare I abandon those kids? So Reddit. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Wow. I did not expect such a result. Thanks everyone who has responded. First thing, a lot of people are recommending various medications to me. My GP has tried me with different medications. They do lessen the symptoms, but I still experience the symptoms. I'd also be wary about buying over-the-counter medications to try, as I am on other medications besides. Secondly, a lot of people are unfairly calling Chris a deadbeat. He really isn't. He has them 50% of the time. He actually suggested changing their custody arrangements, so he has them on the weeks she's working afternoons. Mom didn't want to deal with going to court. I'm fairly certain you don't have to if both parents agree, but no one listens to me. Also, the reason he was evicted was because his landlord sold the house, not his fault. Some people are saying they are too young to be alone. There's no minimum legal age to be alone in the UK. I was 10 when I started being left alone. When I was younger, I had an older cousin that babysat me sometimes from when he was about 12. Usually, my nan had me when mom and Chris were working. This was before Layla and Mason were born. She died when I was 10, which was when I started being left alone. At the time, my dad lived further away. I was 16 when mom and Chris split. That was when I started looking after them before and after school. They were three and five, so needed more looking after than they do now. I did get paid at that time. It turned into free rent when I left school and started working. Mom did my laundry that day. I did it other days. My clothes always went in with everyone else's because it saved energy. I wasn't a lazy freeloader letting my mom do everything. Am I the a-hole? All right. She goes into great detail on this story. And then I guess sounds like answering a bunch of people's questions. How old are the kids? The kids are now 12 and 10. Okay. I think a lot of people would argue that those kids are old enough to watch themselves. Oh, yes. Um, so I'm not going to really beat on that drum. That's a personal opinion. Or, yes, she's right in wherever you live based off of the laws that are passed. In my opinion, 12-year-old is old enough to supervise a 10-year-old, at least for a little bit. For a few hours, yes. That's what we're talking about. A couple hours in the afternoon between her getting the mother getting off and being home. What I will say is it sounded like the perfect situation was being had at that home for a little bit anyway. ROP was getting a rent-free place to stay as an adult. At this period of time in human history, getting to live someplace rent-free is a pretty good deal. Yeah, because rent is... <laughs> More expensive than mortgages nowadays. Just keeps going up. Now, it's not technically free in, in this story because she's also providing a service for her mother. It sounds like she's being, in her words, another mom to her younger siblings. And I'm guessing this has gone on for a little bit since she at least was, what, 16? Correct. And those kids were much younger then. So they now she kind of lightens us up and goes, well, now I'm just kind of doing the bare minimum. They don't really need me anymore. But I think where this story comes to a head for me is in this situation, the mother is being asked to watch a dog that, who is it again? Is it a family member? It's her ex. Okay. So she's being asked to watch the ex's dog because he's moving to a place where he can't have animals. Correct. So without talking to her adult daughter, who is 23 at this point and has helped her for many years in their agreed upon situation... She just goes ahead and agrees to take on this dog, but she knows that her daughter has an allergy to them. I understand that maybe at the beginning of that 
situation where they're taking on the dog that kids 10 and 12 forget to shut doors. All right. You're getting a new habit that you have to build. Sometimes those things happen. It doesn't happen overnight. (laughs) But she says throughout this period that her family keeps making the same mistakes over and over again, leaving doors open, not adhering to the things that they agreed to. Even leaving her doors open. You can see where she's tried. And you can also see where she knows how important her role has been towards helping her mother and those kids. But she also makes it aware to everyone that she's not asking for the dog to be gotten rid of. Yes. So we're not seeing this being from a completely just throw it all out the door because I'm upset situation. This has gone on for a minute. They've chosen to agree to her stipulations and then not follow them. That's a problem. There should have been at least some consideration towards how this would have affected her life. I don't see a problem with her wanting to move out. She gave a date. She didn't just all of a sudden leave. She let her mother know she's gone at this point and she followed through. Good for you. I know, especially when you're that young and in this climate, following through with something as big as like taking the leap and moving out, probably very hard. So she stuck to what she believed in and I can get behind that. She says it though. She still will come over if there's a problem where she's needed. She's not cutting them off. And by the way, she's five minutes away. We're not talking about she's off the planet Earth. She's five minutes away from you. Are you sure I heard Mars has an opening? (laughs) Good for you for creating the boundary. You have to, at some point, start realizing that your health comes first and you don't compromise that for other people, especially when they're not willing to compromise for you, because that's what it sounds like here. Everyone except for you is the a-hole in this situation and the two children. (laughs) Well, I hope not them. Especially them. (laughs) <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> wow, Grinch. <laughs> well, the consensus on Reddit is our OP is definitely not the a-hole. In fact, I personally commend our OP for utilizing a situation in her favor and then essentially helping out her family in the long run. But you're not beholden to people like that. I have to say I will repeat what other commenters put down in the comment section. You are not your mother's servant. Do what you have to do. You made sure that you laughed the right way. You made sure that things were just in good standings. If your mother doesn't want to change custody arrangements because it's too tedious to go through the courts, doesn't want to listen to you when it's very true. If you want to make sure to keep things by the book, you would do the custody arrangement, the go back to court and get it fixed. But as long as both parties are in agreement, you can honestly say it and text to each other and use it as evidence in a court that you guys had an agreement that you were changing some arrangements around so that it fit both schedules better. It doesn't have to all be through the court system and put into papers and signed by a judge. It just needs to be two meeting of the minds. In the end, This is her mother's kids. It might be her siblings, but she's not an onus to her siblings like this. And the mother should make sure that all the arrangements are in place and it doesn't need to be put on her oldest child. Here, here. I do wish them the best. And I'd say this is probably a a new ship that sailed for our OP. Gives a little bit of independence and uh, she's still only five minutes away. She sounds like she loves her family still. Oh, hands down. Cutting it off and throwing it all out the window she still sounds like a lovely person she does well let's go to our very last story and see what you think am i the a-hole for blocking my stepdaughter after she made a scene at my engagement party last weekend my fiance and i had an engagement party for all the people who can't come to our intimate wedding before this relationship i was married to another lovely woman who i'd been with for nearly 10 years before her passing She had two kids. I guess we can go with Eve and Tom, whom I had a great relationship with. After her passing, though, I was completely broken. I obviously wasn't the only one, though, so I had to be strong and that rock for the kids, 23 male and 19 female at the time, until a little after the funeral. After that period passed, I took time for myself I was empty and needed to find some fulfillment, so I quit my job and selfishly but rightfully took three years off to travel Africa 
Asia, and Eastern Europe for almost three years. It wasn't a glamorous excursion and more spiritual, so there were long stretches of time where there was no communication with anyone. The point, though, is during this period of time, the kids and I naturally drifted apart. I came back dating my current fiancé, whom I met on my journey, and that also didn't help with our relationships. Tom and I weren't as close as we were, but we regularly update and check up on one another. Even I's relationship dwindled down to just birthday wishes. So Eve heard of this party and asked if she could come. Thinking she'd finally come around, I was ecstatic and even organized her plane ticket and hotel room. The party happened. Everyone is having a nice time, and then Eve asked to take the mic. She then talks about some memories she recalled from her childhood and then went to the kids, seven female and nine female, and told them they were lucky to have me for as long as their mother doesn't die or I'll just fuck off and abandon them too. She then went on a small rant insulting me before I managed to remove the mic from her and asked her to leave. She left and the party kind of awkwardly continued. I felt like she came solely with malicious intent to sabotage everything and all of it was unnecessary, so I blocked her on everything and asked my fiancé to do the same. My sister believes me blocking her is too far and I should reach out. I can see where she's coming from, but also I equally feel like I've reached enough to grab the stars over the years and this is too far. Am I the a-hole? So... There is quite a lot of hurt in this story. By the way, tis peak, my lord. Tis peak. Had to brush that one off. (laughs) I want to ask, before we get kicking into it, does he say how long from the funeral he takes till he goes on his excursion or soul journey? He actually does. In the comment section, two months after the funeral. He left, and he had little to no contact for three years after that. Okay. That kind of really shapes <laughs> my my understanding of this story, because this wasn't like a fresh marriage, and his stepchildren were much older. I thought, does he say? So since he was with his wife, or his late wife, for 10 years, that would make his daughter, the one that went to the party, she was nine He's been in their life. He's dad, (laughs) you know, and and based off of her reaction at that party, he's dad. And that cut deep. I'm shocked that he didn't understand. Now, don't get me wrong. It sounds like and it would be to anyone when he lost his partner, it completely changed his world. Correct. I'm thankful every day I have you. And when I hear these stories, it really does pitch you and makes you thankful for what you have right now. But for him. It sounds like it turned it completely upside down and he failed to understand that as those kids father, whether or not he's a stepfather or not, he was in that role for a very long time for them, that they also lost their mother. And by him exiting two months after the funeral and not having anything to do with them, they essentially lost two parents in one go. That's terrible. I understand taking time for yourself. That's important. But as that person in their lives, you owed them a little more than disappearing for three years. Now, for your 23-year-old daughter to have done that at the party, was that right? No, but you can definitely tell, like I said earlier, how deep you cut. That she set up and wanted that moment (laughs) to show you that. That relationship is probably completely destroyed. Oh, it is. Um, I can't imagine it coming back after that. You turn your back on them when they needed you the most. So in my opinion, OP, you are the a-hole in the story. I get having to have time for yourself, but there is always a time and a place. Your kids needed you too. Well, the consensus on Reddit was that our OP is definitely the a-hole. In fact, a lot of commenters kept pointing out, you just decided to drop any form of being a parental figure to your former wife's kids And it's to the detriment of not just your relationships with them, but with everyone around you, because you essentially cut off with everyone. Now, I read through some of the comments, and I actually had to scour the internet for this. 
because I kept seeing where individuals in the comment section kept pointing out to things that he was saying, but I wanted to read what they were saying. So I actually went to an archived website to load up what the deleted comments were and was pleased to see that they were still around, that they were able to archive these guys. I have to say, there are some things that were said that I feel is very selfish and a bit callous of our OP. And let me go ahead and just read the two things that I picked out myself. The first one was, he said, no. She was 19 when I left. I left for almost three years and came back in a relationship with my current fiance. Not engaged to her. We only got engaged earlier this year. I think, at least when it comes to this comment, you really ditched your children. Yes, they might be adults, but they're still they're still your kids. Still your kids. <laughs> yeah, they don't stop being your kids. Nope. The way that you treat them changes, but they're still your children. So you ditched your children in the time where you, yes, you lost your partner. They lost their mother. And then they lost you, just like you said, Tim Stradamus. You come back three years later, then they see that you have brought back a replacement of their mother. How hurt that would be. Not only were they abandoned, but then their mother was replaced. Now, additionally, one of the things that I read and picked up on myself was when he said he came back and he had to do a reconnection tour with everyone, especially the kids. Every part of me hates that. And I take hate to be a very strong word. A reconnection tour, like you can just pick up and drop off what you want at a at a blip. I truly, truly hate that because people's feelings don't turn off and don't turn on at someone else's want. And that's how he kind of made it seem like now I have to go through this chore where I have to go and connect with everybody that I once had a connection with because they had a problem that I went on my excursion. It wasn't an excursion. You ran away because of your grief and left a lot of people that were grieving that needed you. And then you came back because you found someone to fill that hole. Because unfortunately, our OP actually also puts in the comment section that he was very codependent on his partner, on his former partner. So for me, I see this as, yes, you saw the world and then you filled that hole with someone else which is why you were fine with coming back. And that's exactly how other people saw it. I can understand the hurt. Now for me, I cannot label this as just our OP being the a-hole here. Everyone sucks here. And the only reason why I say that, I have already listed why our OP is definitely an a-hole. But his stepdaughter is an adult. She's in her 20s now. And she's talking to a seven and nine-year-old that was not the time or place to do that. And those children shouldn't be the outlet to your hurt and disappointment and anger. That is unfair. Now, should she have had this conversation and dished it out to the fiance and her, I guess, former stepfather? Because apparently he doesn't see himself as a father figure if he just left. That I can side be behind. Go ahead and... You can direct that to other adults. Your words, you definitely can express yourself that way to another adult. But don't put those children in the middle of that absolute disappointment and anger because they don't deserve that. It's very true. It's That's a very unfortunate situation where nobody won. <laughs> like it's There's just a lot of hurt that no one properly handled as an adult. They just kind of kick the can down the road and then this is what it evolved into. You don't get to just invite yourself back into people's lives and have them accept you for the things that you did or didn't do in this case. So, well, was that our last story? That was our last story. You keep ending these off on bad notes. <laughs> Debbie Downer Wednesday. It's supposed to be Christmas. But we can only go up from here. <laughs> <laughs> As our stories come to a close, don't forget, you see in the world what you carry in your heart. If you have enjoyed listening to us read and talk about today's stories, please rate, subscribe, and turn on notifications for new content. We regularly post on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. 
And we give all of our love to our patrons and your continued support. Thank you so much. Yes, we love and appreciate every single one of you. And as always, listeners, we look forward to hearing your opinions in the comments below. What did you think about the stories today? All of these were very intricate, very confusing stories. And remember, if you post it, maybe we'll see it on the internet. You know, I think I want to put a snowman in the background. I think we have one. In the garage. Let's go. I'll sit right here. Ha, 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 ha.